This is our first episode of the Sermon Rap. Like rap as in W A R P. No, w- no, no. I can't no, even no. spell. It's a, no, that's not R A P. Oh, R A. Okay. W A. No, W R A P. Yeah, Sermon Rap. Like a burrito rap. We're getting the basics. Down, a burrito man. rap. Okay. The, the big question is, do you have your sermon done for Sunday? It's Friday. I, think I do. Is it wrapped? Oh, good. It's yeah, all wrapped I've up. I've got it all wrapped yeah. up. Yeah. And so what what we're doing, we're going through a series of messages now. In, in, in the church, and we kind of wanted to, um, before the weekend, just to give our people an opportunity to kind of have a preview of the message mm-hmm. and to talk it through, and mm-hmm. I'm really excited about it. This yeah. is going to be a cool yeah. opportunity yeah. for us. Yeah. yeah. But, I, you know, I've been here for almost a month. You've been here at Trinity ten now months. for 10 mm-hmm. months, and w- we've had just an incredible time it's already. It's been a blast. Yeah, it's been a blast. But I do have a couple serious questions for okay. you. Mm-hmm. Every time I come in your office to ask a question or anything like that, you just like look up at me, you smile, and then while you're, while you're listening to my question or something, you whip out, I mean, it's happened more than once, you whip out this big black <laughs> chocolate, like dark chocolate bar, single origin yes. chocolate, yeah. and you rip off, you like rip off like a half of it, uh, put it in your mouth, and you're just like yes, eating it like you would a piece of bread or something. Yes. And, um, and so I have two questions. Are you a chocoholic? You know. And then and the, I, sec- the second question okay, first, okay, okay, okay just, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then why haven't you shared any with me? <laughs> See, I didn't even know that you noticed me eating it. You may say that, that's may why I wonder if it's like some obsessive problem that you have. You don't even notice you're doing it. You just, I mean, you just, almost like you hold the chocolate bar up to my face. I'm so sorry, bro. I didn't yeah. even know you noticed it. Your, your eye contact was so maintained. You yeah. must have this magical peripheral you can see actually what i'm doing i do love chocolate yeah, i love yeah, dark it, chocolate i thought maybe it's like something you do when you're getting ready for your sermon you're just you're just like gorging on chocolate you know what it's a stress response to whenever you walk into my office <laughs> <laughs> i'll have to remember that my wife got it for my birthday seriously oh really a birthday okay present but yeah. no but how many Sunday. how many kilos or pounds well, pounds rather here in the U.S. of chocolate do you have in your house? Does she buy you? I, I, just those two bars. So okay. after this, I have oh, no okay. more. I'm, I've got like one little chunk left. Right. I'll bring oh. you some in. Oh, man, anyway. I need it. I need anyway, it. so on a more serious note, we've been going through a series called Encounters with God. Mm-hmm. Uh, stories uh, of God's, how, how would you say it? Stories, stories of grace yeah. overcoming guilt. Yeah. Stories of grace overcoming guilt. And I know for me and for many in our congregation, um, I just heard a lot of great feedback on mm-hmm. these messages. And just the transformation that's coming through the life of the body here through yeah. these messages has been exciting. And looking at the patriarchs and the prophets, last week we looked at Samuel. Yeah. Uh, Samuel, uh, God come, encounters, comes to Samuel, mm-hmm. this servant in the temple yeah. uh, with Eli and his sons. Mm-hmm. And God speaks to Samuel uh, a message of judgment right. to Eli and his sons and we see that whole theme of God encountering Samuel, but yet mm-hmm. Samuel ends up making the same mistakes yeah. that Eli does, mm-hmm. and but yet we see God's grace yeah. and revealing through uh, the, the the need of all, all of our human needs yeah. a perfect prophet. Yeah, we found that in Jesus. And yeah, that was an incredible transition and in, 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 in conclusion to the message yeah. on on Sunday. I don't know yeah. if you could comment a little bit yeah. about the whole series as a whole yeah, and what you know, the purpose of this I is. I really wrestled with even in choosing this series yeah. because it's such a different series than the ones I when I just finished in Romans 8 where I'm looking at a very tight logical argument that yeah. Paul makes as really the pinnacle of of the book of Romans. How many know, bars of chocolates did you eat? Oh, Romans? man. I actually sorry, didn't sorry. eat any during that series, <laughs> okay, so okay. maybe it would have been yeah, better. Yeah. But, you know, I, I really wanted, I, I felt burdened that we really understand who God is yeah. and what it means to have yeah. an encounter with God. Mm-hmm. Because I, I think a lot of people get the sense that when you have an encounter with God, it's it's kind of like this uh, warm and fuzzy feeling oh, yeah, that would sure. kind of put you on this, this adrenaline high or yeah. something. When in fact, I, I read the Bible and I see when people encounter God, it leaves them like disintegrated, yeah, like right. undone. You look yeah. at the Isaiah, yeah. how he saw the Lord high and lifted up. Yeah. You look at the Apostle John, how yeah. he, he fell as if he were dead. Yeah. Look at Peter. Dan- Daniel, I'm thinking of Daniel, yes. the Old Testament. In his yeah. visions, in, yeah. in Daniel, when he saw the Lord. And, and you realize that in, in the Bible, encounters with God are not these warm and fuzzy experiences. They are these transformational yeah. experiences that leave you feeling absolutely exposed. Mm-hmm. And what I wanted to do was to really give, like, dissect each one of those encounters, beginning with God's encounter and confrontation of Adam and Eve after they fell, Mm -hmm. after their sin, and really help us understand what it means to encounter with God. And as we've looked at each of these episodes, there have been these three themes that have Mm -hmm. been emerging over and over again. 
and that is that God reveals himself for who he is. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's like you get this idea that God is not the God of your imagination. Like mm -hmm. we try to put God in this little box, but God explodes our box and he shows us that he is in a category of his very own. Yeah. And then when God shows us for who he is, he shows us for who we are. And yeah. it's really, that's the disintegrating experience. Yeah. Like you're, right. you're in the presence of someone who's totally unlike you, mm -hmm. who's holy and you're not. Mm -hmm. and, and that's where the people like Isaiah would say, woe is me for I am undone. Yeah. In light of our own guilt. And yes, sin. Yeah. definitely. Yeah. You, you, you become aware of that you're worse than you could ever imagine. Yeah. Uh, but then in these encounters, God is always offering his grace. Mm, yes. So you get this, this transformational offer in which although we would be completely undone in the presence of God, God chooses to use that moment to rescue us, mm -hmm. to invite us into fellowship with him. And that's really the whole reason why God uh, is, is inviting people, yeah. is confronting people, not, not in, in judgment, but in grace, in, yes. in mercy. Uh, if if people will accept that, yeah. And so those are the things that I've really hoped. And for me, it has been it's been absolutely trans transformational because yeah. uh, it's it's caused me to think about what it really means to live in the presence of God. And yeah. I want that for our people too. Amen. Amen. And I think God is working through that. It, it, it's been great to you go through the like these Old Testament story, the Old Testament narrative, mm -hmm. and then Jesus yes. has shown up yes. in every message. And yeah. I think that's been so cool to see. Uh, yeah. How to like as a as a trying to learn preaching more, to 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 learn how to bring in the Christ yes. uh, centered message in the gospel. Right. To and that. actually, John, yeah. you mentioned bringing in Jesus. It's not just a tack on at the end of a right. sermon. Yeah. Because right. Right. You truly can't have an encounter with God without, unless yeah. without an encounter with Jesus, yes. because God is known only through Jesus. Right. Right. And, and yeah. any attempt to know God apart from Jesus Christ is not the God of the Bible. Yeah. Uh, because this is what John is talking about in, in his gospel. He says, in yeah. the beginning was the Word, and the Word was made flesh. Like, this right. is this is God's yeah. revelation of who he is through Jesus, particularly in his work on the cross, right. where there's this, this display of mercy and mm. judgment at the same time. So, yeah, every encounter with God must lead us to Christ. Christ. But we see, though, that there's so many messages that we've heard in books we've read where the, the hero is the patriarch or right. the prophet or right. the king. And yeah. that leads us maybe to this week's message mm -hmm. where we're looking at David. Yeah. In the next two weeks, we'll be looking at right. uh, King David. Yeah. And we see this, the end, the end of Samuel's life, mm. we see Israel asking for a king. Yes. And God says, go ahead, let them ask for a king. Yeah. And we see this transition now. So yeah, that, yes. And so out, out of the life of Samuel, you know, have this, this chaos. It's even kind of yeah. spilling over from the book of Judges. Yeah. There's no king. Everybody does what's right in, yeah. in their own eyes. Yeah. And so you have the life of David, and David is such a popular character, right? Yeah, right, right. And yeah. He, he features so largely, even to current American popular Even to culture. politicians in Washington, David right. is a, a, he's, he's the, the, has a great legacy of, of a leader, mm -hmm. but yet he's a failure. He's, yeah. he's committed adultery and yeah. all these other things. And Which is one reason why I think that people identify him with so yeah. easily. Because he's, so, yeah, yeah, right. he's so human. Yeah. He is so relatable. Right. He's so authentic. And the, the, the Bible's portrayal of him is, is not one of a perfect person up no. on a pedal. So it's like, yeah, there's a guy just yeah. like me. But you think about the stories that people tend to remember about David. Right, yeah. And like, yeah. what would they be? Yeah, like, like David and Goliath or... Okay. Yeah, yeah, and David and Goliath, and then uh, David and Saul. Yeah, like he's like this. He's humbled before Saul, and you know how to wait to be promoted. You know, yep. wait for the promotion. Oh, yeah. let, let you you get promoted first. Don't don't you know? Don't put yourself before great men and kind yeah. of the which are great are great lessons and great themes. Mm -hmm. But is there something more? to David, God's encounter with David that comes out of his life. Yeah, right? what's interesting is that if you were to ask your typical person who knows about the life of David, like, what do you know about David? And what do you think is the right. most important episode in the life of David? Right. People would say, well, David and Goliath, right? right? Yeah. I mean, the, you like think the rags to riches. I yes. Think. You told me, you, we talked about this earlier, the yeah. rags to Yeah, you've got story. this. It, that's one reason why I think that the life of David resonates so deeply with us, even as Americans, because yeah, right. yeah. you look at the life of David, and it's kind of this rags to riches sort of story. Yeah, yeah. Like it, it arcs. from nothing, comes up, from nothing. And yeah. Yep, it arcs up like this. Yeah. And the, the catapult moment, in fact, is this encounter with Goliath yeah, right, that is right. just like branded into our imagination. This just yeah. little teenage dude before this big seasoned yep. warrior giant. Yeah. And he brings the guy down, right? Right, right, right. And, and this is so inspirational to us. Yeah. And what is astonishing to anybody who's actually read the Bible through right. is that after the historical books, that episode is never mentioned again. Hmm. 
It's like, when yeah. you think of what's the most important thing about the, the life of David, well, according to the Bible, it certainly wasn't David and Goliath because it never gets another mention. Right. Jesus never mentions it. Peter, Paul. N yeah. Not a word. Not yeah. a word. So like, okay, so what could be the most important episode in the life of David? Yeah. And it actually is something that we often overlook, and it's this episode that's recorded in 2 Samuel chapter 7, mm -hmm. where David has finally suppressed his enemies. He has peace all around him. He's conquered Jerusalem, taken a capital city. What king doesn't want a capital city? And he finally begins to think, all right, I want to make a house for God. Like, God's helped me all this time, and I want to make this crowning achievement. Yeah. It's going to be a house for God. And so he, he comes to Nathan, the prophet, comes to him and says, hey, this is, this is, go for it. Do what's in your heart. And then God tells Nathan, the prophet, now go talk to David. Here's what you need to tell him. You want to build a house for me? Actually, David, you're not going to do that. Mm. I'm going to build a house for you. Right. And wow. by house, there's this play on words. The yeah. house for David meant a house for God. Mm -hmm. House for God meant a dynasty for David. Yes. And that is the moment that all the biblical writers that refer mm -hmm. to David, m most of them refer to this moment yeah. in which God makes his covenant, this promise with David, saying, I'm going to build your house. I'm going to build your dynasty. And from your descendants, there's going to be this forever king. He's mm -hmm. going to sit on the throne, and he's going to reign forever and ever. So wh what do we take away from this is that the most important thing about the life of David was not what he did for God, and it wasn't that what he That would be did. like his legacy, like you're saying, like yeah. his Kalev and Goliath, all the, great, the greatest king in Israel's history besides Solomon, the That's wisest right. king, but the great powerful. His, his, his battles, his, yes. his, his, his uh, victories and, over, and different things. Yeah, so, which would what we assume that would be his right. legacy, like his, his victories. Or his, his failures as well. We're talking, like exactly. next week, you'll talk more about his yeah. failures. So those are, those are not the things for which David was, was remembered. Yeah. It wasn't either what he did for God in terms of his victories or, his, or what he did against God in terms yeah. of his failures. It was what God did for David. Yeah. And there's this moment when it makes us realize, man, I think we're seeing things, this whole rags to riches narrative that is like almost worn a groove into our own hearts. It, it turns yeah. the whole thing upside down. It's worthless. It becomes worthless. That's right. Yeah. 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 When God is saying, listen, you, you want to define yourself by, by what you've done? Yeah. Well, that doesn't work. Like, yeah, right, it's right. what God does right. for you. Wow. Yeah. And that is a story of grace yeah. overcoming guilt because right. there's so much guilt in the life of David too. Yeah. Yes. And, and you see what the promise was to David mm -hmm. was that one of his descendants would be this forever king that would sit on the throne and, and rule ultimately over the whole earth. Yeah. And so after the life of David, you know, his life kind of goes up, catapulted by this episode with David with Goliath, and then it begins to arc downward with his sin with Bathsheba. And then the, the narrator or the, the writer of the books of Kings and Chronicles are, are almost as if they're looking for that perfect king that is like David, but without his faults. Yeah. And so if you could picture this like a, a stage and a spotlight, and it's just a swinging spotlight. This yeah. is what the theologian Alec Motier, he okay. uses this metaphor of a swinging spotlight oh, cool. that's looking for that perfect king, and he mm -hmm. never finds it. Right. He's like swinging up to the north, then down to the south, up to right. the north, down to the south. Yeah. Like, there's not a perfect king. Why? Because every other king has flaws, and every yeah. other king is finite. Yeah. Like he's limited by his sin, and he's limited yeah. by his mortality. His mortality, yeah. 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 Yeah, and so he never finds, they never find that perfect king. That's the, the Old Testament closes that way. And it's sin and death, we, we talk about, we, we, we see why, you know, Peter, Paul, mm -hmm. all these, is the related to the resurrection. Yes. The, the whole legacy of, or the sin of David. Yes. So with the, with the resurrection, as yeah. you mentioned, so when Jesus of Nazareth comes on the scene, you yeah. have these people that are in need, in yeah. their own chaos, they're saying, Jesus, son of David, have yeah, mercy wow, on us, wow, okay? Wow. So they're recognizing something about this little peasant third in his 30s yeah. from Nazareth right. that he is the descendant. And what becomes the absolute definitive moment saying that he is the ultimate David king is when he defeats death. Yeah. Wow. And so yeah. when Peter preaches in the book of Acts, mm -hmm. he quotes from David and, and he, he's saying, well, David died and is buried, yeah. but here is a man who defeated, God raised him from the dead. And this is the Davidic king that we've been all waiting yeah. for and hoping wow. for. Yeah. So again, it's not what you do for God. It's what God does for you ultimately yeah. in providing Jesus Christ as your perfect king that can defeat your sin and death. Amen. And that's, and awesome. that's this that's this story of, of grace overcoming our guilt. And so uh, what do you think would be some great questions we could ask ourselves before we hear this message this Sunday and some, yeah. some great applications for us as uh, for our people to consider this Saturday, yeah, you know, as one, they prepare for worship. One thing that I thought of, kind of on a more imaginative note, is yeah. what if you know talk about David's confrontation with Goliath? Yeah, uh, 
Before David killed Goliath, he was so stirred by a, a passion for God's fame, and he realized that Goliath was like totally dissing God and the right, army. Yeah. The and, and David runs out and he and he says, "The battle is the Lord's." Yeah, okay, the underdog. Yeah, yeah, right, right. So I thought, what if David, instead of rushing out and saying the battle is the Lord's, what if he had come out there and said, "The battle is David's." <laughs> Goliath goes down. Okay, right, right, like right, right. how would the story of David's life progress since wow. then? You know, yeah. he, he might have been an awesome king. Yeah. Like he, he really could have even gained more support that way. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just something to think about, like how that things would have changed. Yeah. But a, another question would be thinking about David's achievements and David's failures. Yeah. Okay. Right. Our achievements and our failures. Yeah. Because we, we can really connect with that. Yeah. As a people. Yeah. Because there could be some in our congregation, and we guard this ourselves, that, you know, like, I think we asked ourselves, what, what, is, what, what is that one achievement in life that we have as our identity? Mm -hmm. Yes, or, yeah. Know, or even failure, yeah. as you would see from David. Right. Like, what, what's the one thing that we look at as our greatest achievement that mm -hmm. defines who we are? Yeah. yeah, we tend to wrap our identity in something that we've yeah. done, right. whether good or bad. Yeah. We, we tend to we look at the past and say, man, I, I blew it. I failed right and then all our thoughts about ourselves tend to be like focused on those those events yeah and there's something just it could be like about okay we could be we finished our degree mm -hmm. or we didn't get finished our degree yes. so either way we're yeah we're we, you know we live in great sorrow yeah we ran the marathon we finished it yeah, yeah marathon right. finisher or right, we yeah. like quit yeah. at mile 25 you right. know right and we, and we think oh i never finished that I never did and there, yeah. there are things like that that, that or I got to fish every trout stream in the world. <laughs> 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 Have you done that? No, no, okay, no, 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 no not yet. Not yeah. yet. I'm but still trying to achieve that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's true. Like we tend to think of ourselves in terms of our achievements or our failures. Yes. And the message of David's life, particularly God's promise to David, is that the most important thing about you is not what you can do for God. Yeah. But it's what God has done for you in Jesus wow. Christ. Yeah. And and that should both humble you. Yeah. But it should also thrill you too. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's one question. What that I would ask and myself and, and anybody yeah. preparing to listen to this is what are those achievements that I tend to take most pride in? Yeah. And what are those failures mm -hmm. that I tend to most despair over? Right. And that's where yeah. Jesus needs to show up in that's our right. lives. And yeah. That's a challenge as we pray that that, 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 that that goes down into our hearts. Yeah. Versus a head head knowledge versus the heart knowledge in that yeah. area. That's we we pray that Christ would be formed in us and in the, the body of Christ. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions you might applications? Yeah. You know the la the last one that besides I besides eat of. lots of chocolate. <laughs> yeah, get lots of dark chocolate. Right? Yeah, right, right, right. The, the last one that I would think of is this: just because the most important thing about us is what God does for us, not what we do for ourselves, J just simply because of that, it doesn't leave us passive. Oh okay? yeah, yeah. Because this could be something that right. people take away. Like, okay, so because the great human need is like people will cry, do something, do yeah, something. Right, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. And we should. There, there is something for us to do. The good yeah. works that God has created before the foundation of yeah. the world, should we walk in them? That's right. right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that should motivate us. Yeah. Yes, we need a king that does something for us. Right. But that in turn motivates it, us to do things for the king, to submit to right. the king first of all. And, and that's what should, should motivate. So if you think, think about our own lives, think, yeah. okay, what areas of my life are yet like, unconquered by this king? Like, yeah. I want Jesus to be king yeah. of my life, but like you've got, you know, how we use our time, yep. how we use our phones, yeah. the way we talk with, with our, our, yeah. our family, spouses, and all these kinds our of mind, things. The way we think. Our, our yeah, thinking, whole, yeah. The whole, yeah. Yeah, yeah if Jesus were king of every area, what would that look like in our life? Just right. using our imagination, yeah. I think, would help prepare us uh, to better think about and respond to yeah. what it means that Jesus is the, the ruler, the Lord of Amen. our lives. Amen. Well, we're, I'm looking forward to this Sunday. It's going to be I'm another great Sunday. It. And uh, we're praying. We're yeah. praying that this week uh, that God would again uh, meet us where we're at yeah. in our in our sin or in yeah. our achievements and our failures that Christ would evermore become king of yeah. our lives this this Sunday. Yeah. Amen. That's awesome. Amen. I can't wait. Well, we'll we'll give this a test. Yeah. And this sermon wrap. Yes. And uh, it's going to be fun, I think. Awesome. Over Thank the you, next John. Week, so look for this. Uh, can you give us a little clue on what's going to be in the next series? Next time, man. So next Sunday. Or next series? No, next series. Oh, dude, I can't talk about that. Okay, That's okay. top all secret, right, bro. Right. What are you trying to do? Maybe something about chocolate. Uh, I think so. I <laughs> right, think right, so. Right. Did cool. David ever eat chocolate? You know what? I don't know. I don't think so. But he, he ate honey. He ate honey. Honey, honey, honey. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right we better shut this down okay, or else okay. uh, it's going to be too long longer than five minutes it's probably already 20 minutes yeah,